Champions League is back, baby! The round of 16, the knockout stages, the most entertaining, the most energetic, the most scintillating moment of the Champions League. And we got Jonathan Johnson, Jimmy Conrad to preview it all. Some ridiculous games, including, of course, PSG, Real Madrid, sporting against Man City, and, of course, Inter as they return in the knockout stages versus Liverpool and Salzburg against Bayern Munich. Champions League round of 16. It's here, baby. JJ, Jimmy Conrad, LME, Que Golazo begins right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Que Golazo. Thank you so much for being part of the family. We're nearly there. 10,000 subscribers. I feel like we can do it this week. Thank you so much. YouTube.com forward slash Que Golazo. We're also on everywhere you listen to your pod, CBS Sports and your CBS Sports app jimmy conrad wearing manchester city <laughs> i predict it's because uh, have no chance is that right jimmy you know conrad? what i'm going full bandwagon on this one everybody <laughs> the last time sporting uh we're in the knockout rounds they lost 12-1 over two legs to Bayern munich and i'm feeling like it might happen again a similar scoreline against the mighty manchester city the mighty Man City, indeed. And here's the mighty Jonathan Johnson. New haircut, looking smooth. How are you, JJ? Hey there, guys. Good to be back on with you. Yeah, no, not bad. Thanks. Can't complain. Obviously, looking forward to a uh, fairly sizable matchup uh, coming in my backyard tomorrow evening. I would say a fairly sizable matchup, and I'm sure you will be there as well, JJ, to help us go and digest it, all of it. Hey, before we begin, everybody, I know that we're going to be talking about the games, don't worry, specifically the one JJ just mentioned, PSG against Real Madrid. I wanted to do something fun here with our producer, Des Norris, a little bit of a sliding doors universe. Because if you remember, Jimmy, uh, even before... You know, uh, we got going into these games. Uh, the original draw kind of had a had a hiccup because uh, they had a they had an actual draw already set up, and then there was a massive mess. They had to redo it. So Des Norris says to me, "Let's do something fun, JJ and Jimmy. Let's let, let's talk about what the games would have looked like if nothing had happened." Uh, I don't know if you can show them up, Des Norris, on the screen, but if you can't, don't worry about it. I will talk about them. This is the initial round of sixteen draw mm -hmm. since now declared void. It was Benfica Real Madrid. Via Real Man City, Atleti Bayern Munich, Salzburg Liverpool, Inter Milan Ajax, Sporting Juventus, Chelsea stays as is against Lille, PSG Man United. Jimmy, I like those. Uh, is there one in particular that you probably would have? Man, that would have been a better game. Well, I'll just start by saying that since the draw got voided, I'm going to use a word that the kids use today. A little sus, right? A little suspect. <laughs> a little sussy, everybody. But when I think about so the matchups, Inter Milan versus Ajax, is really nice, and that would have been a good one, even though Inter Milan and Liverpool is not too bad either. But but watching PSG, this iteration of PSG slap around Manchester United, the who are feeling really sorry for themselves right now, and so are their fans. <laughs> oh, I know they're coming after me now at Kegelasso Pod. Hit us up if you want to. Oh, Jimmy's making fun of my team. Okay, but PSG versus Manchester United, I think would have been very, very good. I wonder if JJ feels the same way. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I think everyone would have been talking, obviously, about Messi coming up against Ronaldo. Uh, you know, that would have been a huge talking point. But, uh, you know, this time we do get at least, uh, you know, all the, the, the furore surrounding uh, Kylian Mbappe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lille just got so unlucky, uh, you know, to think <laughs> that they got exactly the same draw twice. Uh, Inter Milan IX, yeah, would have been uh, would have been very tasty. Uh, I remember some of the club admins getting a bit, uh, a bit irate about having to redo the draw. Uh, and also, you know, I think Atletico Madrid will be so grateful that they don't have to go up against Bayern Munich, especially a Bayern Munich who, you know, are going to be pretty angry about their their defeat in the Bundesliga over the weekend. You know, given how difficult uh, time Atleti are finding uh, things at the moment, I you know, I I think some of these teams have been really spared uh, with this uh, second draw. Yeah, I agree. Inter Ajax would have been fun as hell, I think. Uh, that would have been a really interesting matchup. All right, well, let's talk about the games that are actually happening that has finally rectified. And we begin, of course, everybody. This is, I mean, you know, if you were going to your local movie plex, 
right? And there's movies all over in the summer. I would imagine, Jimmy, this is it. This is the Jaws. This is the E.T. Why am I just mentioning Spielberg movies? This is the movie. <laughs> it. PSG against Real Madrid. All eyes on killing Mbappé, but there are so many narratives left, right and center. Talk to me about this game. Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, you got uh, Keylor Navas and Asha Fakimi, who are formerly of Madrid, Sergio Ramos. So it looks like he's going to miss the first leg. So clearly saving his uh, dabbling in the dark arts for when they return to the Bernabeu. Uh, Pochettino had been previously touted as a potential candidate for the Madrid job at some point, killing Mbappe, as, as JJ correctly stated. Looks like he might be heading to Madrid. Then you have Neymar and Messi, who are ex-Barcelona players. So... Yeah, it's pretty crazy. This game is going to be pretty nuts. And the last time that these two teams faced off in Paris in Europe was a 3-0 win for PSG. Can they replicate that? I really think it's going to come down to the starting lineup. And it, for Madrid in particular, because when Kareem Benzema plays, they're just a different gravy. And when he doesn't, they seem to struggle. They they don't score as many goals. They're not as threatening. They're not as clinical uh, in the 18-yard box and and. He looks like he's going to play, but I don't think he's going to be at 100%, which I still think will make a difference. It's still going to occupy the PSG center backs in a meaningful way, which could open up space for Vinicius and others to exploit. But still, and then with PSG, I thought they were tremendous against Lille two weeks ago. I, that was the best I'd seen them perform. JJ obviously watches them a little bit more intimately than I do. But I just was really happy with the balance that I saw. And I like their lineup there, especially in midfield. But and Verratti has to play for them to really uh, kick on to that that level. But then against Ren this weekend, they didn't really hit the switch until like the 75th, 80th minute. So I don't know which version of PSG we're going to see. That said, Messi seems to show up for 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 uh, PSG in this competition in particular. So this is going to be a great game. I like PSG to do the business, but barely. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there, there, there's so many different things to to look at coming into this one. Uh, you're right, and I think we mentioned it so many times, Verratti will be hugely important for PSG, but I think he warmed up for this one nicely, uh, given that he was up against Lovro Meyer of uh, Ren. It's good preparation for going toe-to-toe with Luka Modric. Uh, I think that's going to be a really, really interesting battle to, to keep an eye on. Obviously, you know, there's superstar tussles all over the pitch uh, with this one. Uh, there's a couple of interesting key personnel decisions that will have to be made. Uh, Pochettino has already announced that he won't be able to call upon the likes of Idris again, Abdul Diallo from the start, given that they've been out of action for so long with the Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, you know, but also at the same time, you've got Neymar coming back from injury, probably going to be in the squad, unlikely to be fit enough to start. So he might come on as, you know, some sort of wild card for the last 10 to 15 minutes. We haven't seen him play for a few months now. I agree with you completely. I think PSG were much, much better than they've been pretty much at any time during the season with the possible exception of that home clash against City when they played Lille recently. Uh, and I don't think there's any coincidence in the fact that it was probably Messi's best game, certainly his best game domestically uh, for PSG since uh, since arriving. So, you know, I think PSG are moving slightly towards hitting their best uh, run of form this season. And obviously it comes at the perfect time, given that they're entering the business end of the, the season now. And there's added importance to this as well, given that they crashed out to the Coupe de France. So, you know, lots and lots to play for uh, on both sides. But I think this one... I can see that PSG are going to be very, very motivated for this. But, you know, they'll have to remember that it's a two-legged affair. It's, it's no good them just performing once at home and then uh, going and losing it away. They're going to have to do it over both legs. So whatever performance they put in on Tuesday, they're going to have to replicate, if not better, uh, when they go to Madrid. Yeah, so before, Jimmy, before we go to you for betting tips and we finalize the game in itself, I just wanted to quickly come back to you. JJ about the mood in Paris to be honest with you I'm, I'm interested in that specifically I guess from PSG fans not even Pochettino or the club I mean I know what kind of you know cookie cutter answer they're going to give us but Kylian Mbappé obviously is a massive talking point I was watching Chiringuito like all last week and Real Madrid fans are kind of like nervous they're like really kind of bricking it uh, on many aspects one of them is Lionel Messi because he obviously likes to deliver uh, at least when he was with Barcelona against Real Madrid. And the other part is about Mbappé, like where's his head at, etc. So some are like not worried, but the majority of Real Madrid fans are kind of, you know, uh, shaking a little bit. I, I'm with Jimmy. I see a slight 2-1 win for PSG in this one. But what's the mood with PSG fans? Because that's what something I don't hear as much, actually. 
Uh, being completely honest, we'd be pissed off uh, at the moment if you watch the way that the fans. <laughs> That's were what behaving. I wanted. <laughs> yeah, if you if you look at the way the fans were behaving, uh, you know, at the beginning of the Rennes match, they boycotted the first twenty five minutes or so. There were no fans in the ultra section in the the auto end, uh, and then they proceeded to 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 put up a, a, a bunch of different banners. Putting pressure on the, you know, the, the 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 PSG hierarchy, you know, calling out some individuals in particular, uh, you know, some of the the sort of overplay, overpaid, underperforming uh, members of the squad, uh, you know, Leonardo questioning his uh, role in all of this, sort of, you know, how he's been leading the club the the last. Let me just years, interrupt JJ for a second. Let me just interrupt very quickly. They're they're thirteen points ahead in League A. Mbappe's contract is always going. What, so what are they pissed off about? Is it the Mbappe? thing more than the or is it just like they want to win but they want to win beautifully what are they angry about it's not it's not even necessarily related to Mbappe or to Messi mm -hmm. it's uh, you know what they feel is like the erosion of uh, you know PSG's identity they're mm -hmm. annoyed at sort of you know all of the the different kits why PSG are playing at home uh, you know, debuting a, a white kit when, uh, you know, their traditional colors are, are blue and red. Uh, you know, there's uh, th there's a number of different uh, issues, and but none of them really relate to sort of actual just individual uh, players and stuff like that. It's more sort of the direction of the club as a whole, basically feeling like they've been left behind um, because PSG have just become this... Uh, you know this 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 massive sort of mainstream uh, product, so to speak, uh, that uh, you know anyone and everyone can can consume. That's uh, interesting. The, the That's people interesting. who have basically basically the people who have put uh, you know the club where it is by following them week in week out. Uh, you know to all ends of, uh, of of France and across Europe. You know basically don't even get the the consideration. Uh, you know as to to sort of what direction the the, the club is taking. They just feel it's less their own club and the you know the, the club that they fell in love with and identified with okay i'm gonna and i love all that insight by the way i could talk to you about psg fans and, and yeah French no fans the identity general, thing is really interesting it, yeah. it is it is very interesting and and the fact that they would take such exception to an away kit being d displayed at home a, for, is, a fourth kit a fourth kit yeah just because it's, it's, it's just another <laughs> sign that what is this about is it about money you the know 90s the 90s bulls jimmy the 90s i know bulls. i know i, mean, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. clearly right. such a relationship with uh parisians right <laughs> it's, it's 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 it it's what's cool is that it matters to them the little things matter yeah. and i think they're just trying to let ownership know these little things do matter to us and and there's a culture that we're trying to establish and you're and you're tainting that culture or you're just not actually acknowledging it by by always kind of chasing the coin but they spent a lot of money on players they got to get some of that coin back all right let's get into some coin ourselves and talk about some bets now as i looked and uh you know dabbled into uh some of the stuff on on caesar sportsbook something super intriguing to look at is that the under two and a half goals is at plus 130 and the only reason i find that interesting because the last three madrid games have been under two and a half goals and kareem benzema didn't play in any of those three games and and so if he doesn't start look at those lineups I think that uh, that's something to consider. Now, I think there'll be some goals in this one. So I don't know if I truly believe it. Without Benzema, though, something to look at. Also, PSG have a pretty formidable record at home this season. Uh, I've won 14 out of 16 in all competitions. Haven't given up a goal since December at the Parc de Prince. And, and they definitely have set an identity in some capacity on both sides of the ball. And obviously, they're going to want to put their stamp on things in leg one of the knockout rounds of this. Because as JJ correctly stated, it's going to be a tough one in leg two. Now... I do like there's an odds boost on Caesars where Kylian Mbappe to score first is plus 400. I think he likes to put his stamp on the game. We saw him do it against Bayern Munich in previous Champions League uh, iterations. Uh, he 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 likes to put, you know, some, well, lately he's been waiting till the end, but I think he's going to be ready uh, for this one. He did it in the group stages as well. I like this bet. I've seen him do it a few times, so something to look at. And then uh, I, I do, from a from a Madrid perspective, Carlo Ancelotti, he he is a player whisperer. And even if Benzema doesn't play, he, I still think he's going to get something out of this group. And obviously he's a very decorated manager himself, winning three Champions League trophies. So there's something to take into consideration there because I think he's gotten the most out of this group. But he, what I might understand from Madrid fans, he doesn't rotate the squad a lot. So maybe they get tired at this point. I don't really know. Anyway, let's go to PSG winning 2-1. Both teams to score. And uh, that's plus 250. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now. I like, I like what you said, Elamy. 
Two one. You know, you know what? I'm in a really unenviable position here where I agree with Jimmy's shout. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was my pick for the score as well. Two one PSG. Well, listen, all three of us agree on the score, so you know what that means. It's not happening. <laughs> no, but listen to it. The other, now, we're going to move on, I promise. But just one more thing. I believe that this is also such a monumental game because of Mauricio Pochettino and his future, right? Mm -hmm. It ultimately determines everything. Not the game itself, but the journey of the Champions League. I mean, PSG, I believe, have to, at the very least, JJ, get to the final. They have to. It's just, otherwise, once again, the project is, is doomed. What, what do you think? To be honest, I think they have to go and win it. They've already been yeah. to the final. I yeah. don't really That's see why I said at least get to the final, but you're right. You know, actually, Winning actually it actually gets them. Obviously, we don't know what that potential route to the final would look like if they did get past Real, but obviously getting past Real in itself, uh, you know, is going to be a, a real test, a, a real test for a, a team that have not really been that impressive so far this season. We'll see if they can raise their game and if they can, how much. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it seems like a tall order at this moment in time for this PSG side to go and be crowned European champions. We'll see where we are in a couple of months time. But yeah, I, I think it is going to be an important game for, for Pochettino sort of within the, 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 the narrative of the remainder of this season. I don't think whatever happens, whether PSG win the Champions League, whether they go out to Real, I don't think Pochettino is going to be the, the PSG coach beyond the end mm. of this season. And I think if they go out to Real, uh, I think he'll be out of a job sooner than that. Yeah, I agree with JJ on everything he just said. So we are in total agreement today, JJ. I will <laughs> add, though, the Kylian Mbappe situation is also looming. You know, how is he going to perform against his uh, new club? <laughs> but also, <laughs> also, also, also with Mbappe, though. I mean, look at it, look at it from, uh, from his point of view. I mean, I, I was having a conversation with somebody about this before PSG's game against Rennes. It's almost impossible to make some sort of narrative where there's a strong case for Mbappe to decide to stay on at PSG around this game because if he puts in a really strong performance and PSG blow Real Madrid away uh you know it's just it, it's him basically making Real want him even more than they right. already do yeah. it's an and, if PSG, yeah. and if PSG fall to Real it, it's almost like justification for him moving there yeah, true, uh, true. you know because uh, you know PSG just aren't able to offer him that chance to win the Champions League that he craves yeah, yeah. it's a win-win very good point very good points from both of you I love it all right let's move on uh everybody let's talk about you know, uh, Jimmy's team for today, Manchester City, <laughs> as they visit, visit Sporting. Uh, by the way, uh, this is Pablo Sarabia on loan from PSG. That's what he said. At PSG, there are many stars. Here at Sporting, I found a family. The mentality is great, too. We're very far from bling, bling. The mentality in Paris was all football. There was a good understanding between us. It was more competitive than personal. Okay, so Sarabia there, I feel like, you know, maybe talking some smack about PSG, but not really talking about sporting is more of a family. I can see that, I guess, a lot of superstars, too many cooks in a kitchen. Jimmy Conrad, sporting, obviously, they, you know, I'm glad that family stay family because they were in a full-on brawl uh, this past weekend uh, against Porto, and now they have to face the Goliath that is Manchester City. I'm pretty certain that all three of us see a Man City win here. I'm just wondering, Jimmy, is there anything that Sporting can get out of because this is a two-legged affair? I think what really hurts Sporting is the away goals rule. This is where I think that hurts the smaller club because I know this one's at home for them, but but if they could go to Manchester and maybe steal a goal, keep it tight at home, and then maybe steal that away goal, I think that gives them more of a chance. But because there's no away goals, I just think this makes it even more one-sided to Manchester City. Yeah. They're obviously playing – at another level right now, coming off a big win themselves against Norwich. Raheem Sterling getting a hat trick. They've won 18 out of the last 20 in all comps. And then even in Europe, they've impressively won 13 of their last 20 away. They've been in the round of 16, nine consecutive seasons now. I mean, they're really starting to set a benchmark for what this club is about. Now they have to go on and win the whole thing, right? And and I think they know that's the kind of final step for a lot of these players. Like, okay, we got there last year. Maybe you're a little timid in the final, overthinking things as Pep tends to do in the biggest of games. But but now we're going to relax and get after it. I think they got a favorable matchup here. When I look at the group stages, Man City were awesome for the most part. They lost. The, actually, I will say they lost their two away. They lost two away games um, in the group stages, and, and and so there might be something there that Sporting can kind of tap into. But when I think about how Sporting did against Ajax, who play very similarly to City. 
they got absolutely smoked over the two games. They gave up nine yeah. goals in those two games. Uh, Sebastian Allaire was sick. So, so I just don't see how this is even possible. I'm trying to give Sporting a chance here. And with Pote, he didn't play against Porto. They dropped a two-goal lead. They ended up 2-2 in that big derby. He's got to come back and play. He's got 13 goals and nine assists in all comps. If he doesn't play, it makes him even more, uh, I don't know, more predictable attacking-wise. He gives them a little something. But if he's out, they, they really have no chance. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's difficult to see uh, a situation where Sporting come out of this uh, and win over the two legs. I think they'd do well to, you know, to perhaps get a draw in one of one of two games. And like you said, perhaps when City are away, it gives them more of a chance than uh, going to Manchester. I mean, I think, you know, uh, the the home leg for City is going to be. It, it, you know that that's the one where they can probably rack up not a cricket score, but you know, sort of a, you know a f- four or five goal victory. You know, I don't think it'll be sort of as disrespectful as, as or one sided as some of the results in the group stage have been for for City because there's that much more riding on it. But yeah, I think this is a very very uh, difficult task for for Sporting. Nice to hear from uh, Sarabia. He's a guy I. Th- I th- could I could see his value when he was at PSG. I think actually, unfortunately, his PSG career started to go in the wrong direction when COVID struck because just coming into that, uh, he was actually in a very good run of form. Uh, you know, PSG were competitive on, on all fronts. Uh, you know, he was performing well in the domestic cups as well. He was on a real hot streak. And then once, uh, you know, the, the football started being played after COVID again, he, he never really got going, which is a shame because he did show at times that he, he had something to offer and obviously scored that fantastic late equaliser for PSG away at Real Madrid. Uh, you know, which PSG fans will remember fondly. So happy for him uh, that he's found, uh, you know, such a, a happy family oriented uh, environment uh, in Lisbon. And, uh, you know, hopefully he can conjure up a piece of magic and uh, remind everyone what he can do on the biggest stage. Yeah, well, uh, this family better get it together. Jimmy, you made a really good point about the goal differential, I think. Uh, I, and I think uh, we always talk about this. Listen, the only way to beat Man City, and you probably won't win, but at least you you did this, which is you got to hit them in the face. Yeah, you yeah. Got, you you can't you can't sit back. You you just can't. If you sit back, at some point you're going to concede. So what's the point? You're in a knockout competition. Just give it your all for ninety minutes and don't let them breathe. I honestly, you may not win, probably, but you have a better chance of getting something as opposed to just sitting back. Because if you sit back, Jimmy, it's over, right? Yeah, it's over. They have to come out and try to punch them in the face. I think that's where Man City, as you said, uh, can be vulnerable at times. You gotta, you gotta be proactive. If you if you play reactively to Man City, they're just gonna. It, you might be able to hang. Even Norwich did for about thirty minutes. They make one mistake, and all of a sudden City pounces, and it's over. And, and obviously, you need a goalkeeper who's gonna be making some timely saves too, because City are going to get their chances. Now, what I'll say is, City have given up a goal in this competition away in five consecutive games. So there's something there that maybe they're not as, you know, as strong on that side of it. But if we kind of lean into the betting tips a little bit, we all believe that Man City are going to win. This might be the most lopsided tie of the round of 16 in terms of who's going to win. It's just a matter of whether you think Sporting can score. And if you think they can, Man City to win and both teams to score is plus 150. And if you think that City's going to win with a clean sheet, that's that's closer to even money at plus 100. So you gotta just kind of have to look at it there, but it's just so hard to to try to find ways to unlock this city team, and, and especially because they're coming into this with pretty good form off of a back of Raheem Sterling, who's had a hat trick and and mm. or and just or did he? I don't know if he had a hat trick, but he had a couple goals and and he had a brace, I think. He had yeah. a brace, yeah, that's right. And he, you know, when he's he's a confidence guy, and if he's going to continue to get rolled out, you know, it's just another thing, another threat. I just I'm trying hard to find something here with sporting. I respect what they're about and the family environment that they've created, but uh, it's not going to be enough to to just because you got your family doesn't mean you're going to beat Manchester City. <laughs> oh, and guess what? Joe Cancelo didn't need to play. Kevin De Bruyne didn't need to play this past weekend, exactly. so they're all ready to go. All right, quick score <laughs> predictions. I had it as two nothing Man City. What do you have, Jimmy? I'll go three one Man City. Okay, JJ. Yeah, I've got a feeling I went for something even uh, even bigger than that. I might have gone for a three nil. Uh, for uh, City. No, no, I went for a 2 0, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was three. Try yeah. and be differentiated a bit. <laughs> yeah, me neither. But all in all, I think we're all in agreement that this is going to be not just one mountain, probably eight Everests for Sporting to try and do something here in the first leg. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, the remaining fixtures, Inter 
Their return in the knockout stages in the Champions League against Liverpool, very tasty, and Salzburg against a Bayern Munich side that did lose this weekend. So we'll see what happens there. Que golazo! Champions League preview. Jonathan Johnson, Jimmy Conrad, LME. We'll be right back. Hey, Jimmy, what's your favorite planet? Well, I assume the one I'm on, Earth. But uh, <laughs> Mars Mars seems pretty cool. I mean, I'm, I think we're getting closer to, you know, going to walk around and see what's up over there. Yeah, JJ, do you have a favorite planet? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess being a double J, I'd go for Jupiter. Ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Well, mine is Pluto, everybody. I like Pluto. It's 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 far away, so you don't have to visit it all the time. And it's it's kind of cold, isn't it? So you can really cozy up. Well, guess what? <laughs> Pluto TV. Yeah, that's what I did. You like my segue? No? Well, too bad. Get ready for the big Champions League game with Pluto TV. It is your home for premier pregame coverage with Real Madrid TV, a free 24-7 channel dedicated to the beautiful game. Watch the match preview Champions League special on Valentine's Day as we're taping at 1 p.m. Pacific, along with thousands of movies, TV shows, sports, news, comedy, and more free on Pluto TV. V. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way, uh, for everybody, all you lovers out there, especially lovers of the game. All right, let's move on here. This is a good one, I feel. This might be PSG Real Madrid, obviously, is a big headliner here, Jimmy, but Inter Milan against Liverpool, it just speaks to me. We just talked to Fabrizio on our weekly episode, and, you know, he's going to be there. He feels like the Milano, just the entire city is just getting really excited about, you know, Champions League evenings in the knockout stages, and this time around against Liverpool. What do you see? <laughs> this is interesting. I'm a big Inter fan. I'm, I'm, I'm actually even more impressed with what Simon Inzaghi, the manager, has done. You lost Lukaku, lost uh, Hakimi, Antonio Conte leaves. They just won the Scudetto. And now you step in and you take over, and it's been pretty seamless. And Ed and Dzeko's come in and been very, very nice. Uh, Dumfries, you know, he's been good on the side to kind of replace Hakimi. And they just got Robin Gosens, who, once he's healthy, is going to be a nice addition from Atalanta on the left side. It's going to give him that nice balance. So I like what Inzaghi's done. And even in their game against Napoli this past weekend, they were not good in the first half. But in the second half, they scored very early. Ed and Dzeko scored a very good goal. And it seems like, I bring this up because at halftime, something changed. So Inzaghi said something, or he made a tactical adjustment, which made an immediate difference. And that just shows me that this team buys into what their manager says. So there's something about Inzaghi that I really, really like. Now, that said, they're going up against a very good Liverpool team. And, and Inter have only won two out of their last five in the league. They got mm. no Nico Barella in this one out of, due to suspension. So Arturo Vidal, I think, is going to slide in. You got to, whatever you think about Vidal, he's still out there doing his thing. Yeah, and, yeah. and in their last five matches in all comps, Inter Milan only have one clean sheet. And uh, that was 2-0 over Roma, who have their own struggles in a lot of different ways. They've also played uh, Atalanta, Milan, and Napoli in their last six and won none of those. So they're now facing against an opponent in Liverpool who went down to the San Siro against AC Milan in the group stages and got a result with a team. That was the last group stage game, and they didn't rule out their best players. Now it looks like Mo Salah and Sadio Mane will be available for this. Uh, Diogo Jota scored five goals in his last five games. The guy's on absolute fire. And it just feels like this Liverpool team are settling into a nice rhythm heading into the back half of the season. So I'm kind of leaning towards Liverpool and, and what Jurgen Klopp's got going together. Yeah, for me, the thing that I like about this is that Inter are a completely different proposition to what I thought they would be at the beginning of the season. You know, they're they're much more formidable. Uh, you know, and, and kudos to Simone Inzaghi for the way that, uh, you know, he has got this squad, uh, you know, to react from the summer loss of uh, Antonio Conte. Uh, you know, and the the way they've managed to rebuild with some important uh, pieces coming in. Now, for me, I can see Liverpool advancing over the two legs, but in this particular leg, uh, I think that Inter are going to make life difficult for Liverpool. I mean, I don't think that Inter will have enough to win the game, but I went for a 1-1 one, one draw uh, in my prediction, and I'm going to stick with that because I think that they'll give themselves a, a fighting chance going into the second leg. I, then I think Liverpool will have too much. But the other thing to bear in mind with Liverpool is their situation in the league where they're playing catch-up at the moment, trying to keep that gap down uh, on mm -hmm. Manchester City, which got 
a bit bigger over the weekend. Uh, and then, you know, Liverpool are, are constantly trying to, to win back that ground. And at some point, I think something is uh, is going to give and it'll either be in the league where Manchester City just pull away and then that's it, or it'll be in the Champions League and there'll be a slight blip. And I think it'll come here uh, in Italy and I think Inter will come away with the draw. But ultimately, I still expect Liverpool to progress. Well, Inter Milan have won their last two home games in the Champions League, but to Jimmy's point, Liverpool have already played at the San Siro and they did well with a rotated squad against AC Milan. And actually, they also won the last time before that in Italy when they beat Atalanta in 2020-2021. So going to Italy for Liverpool is not an issue. And of course, beating uh, you know Burnley this past weekend, uh, again, Sadio Mane returned. Diogo Jota didn't need to play that many minutes. So this is going to be a different kind of experience. I had it as a two-all draw, Jimmy Conrad. I don't think Liverpool will win, but... I don't think Inter will. You know what? I I, I can buy into the draw for I can buy into the draw for sure. Plus two sixty, I think, is really good value. And uh, Edin Dzeko has actually scored in his last three games against Liverpool. Him to score any times oh. plus one sixty. Arturo Vidal, and I brought him up a little bit earlier because Nico Barella is such an engine for them and and yeah. uh, does so many of the think- thankless things, and he does it very well. And, and also, obviously, adds uh, some world class talent with Barella. But with Vidal coming in, I like him to get a yellow card anytime plus two seventy five because we know he likes to dabble in the dark arts of defending. And I think he will be chasing around some of the Liverpool players. I really liked what Liverpool did this past weekend uh, in their their game. They just a one zero win. It was it wasn't great, but they still kind of grinded out the result. And I think with the return of of Salah and Saudi Mane, even if they don't want to risk Mane because he's still been partying too much from Senegal winning AFCON, which, fair, I would be partying too. That's a pretty big deal. They've never won it before. You got Luis Diaz. I thought they made a really good signing with Luis Diaz, who has obviously proven that he can hang in Europe as well. We've seen his talent in in previous Champions League uh, iterations. So it's, it's, it's hard. I could see the drop just because of what you guys said about Inter. They know they're going to have to get something out of this to give them a chance at Anfield in leg two. So for them to drop it would be pretty difficult. Uh, but I do actually think the away goals not being counted anymore helps Inter here because I think Liverpool could put one or two in and it might be harder for them to replicate that and, and to match that in, in Liverpool. So uh, the draw is really good value. I like it a lot. But if Liverpool won, I wouldn't be surprised. It draws a plus 255. Yeah, good point about the goals as well. All Liverpool really need to do is just make sure that it stays tight. By the way, Fabinho said after the Burnley game, look, we got to play the ball on the ground a little more. Uh, You know, it's going to be, and I feel like Inter maybe can take, amazingly, I I can't believe I'm saying this sentence, but Inter can maybe take a lesson from what Burnley did this past weekend, just make it a little bit uncomfortable for them. All right, finally, let's talk Salzburg against Bayern Munich. Uh, Bayern, as we mentioned, lost this past weekend. Salzburg uh, had a Brendan Aronson goal this past weekend as well. Um, JJ, let's go with you first. Uh, Bayern Munich losing this past weekend. They're away at Salzburg. I mean, on paper, it would seem a Bayern win, but, you know, they show vulnerability uh, like we just saw this past weekend. What do you see here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I don't think any of us expected Bayern to receive that sort of beating, especially the way that the game was at halftime. You know, Bochum to have scored, uh, you know, that glut of goals. Uh, you know, nobody could have predicted that. And, you know, I, I think it was almost expected that Bayern would fight back. And, you know, they started that when Lewandowski scored, but, you know, didn't manage to to finish and at least uh, come away with the draw. So they'll, they'll be hurting after this. Uh, but also perhaps it's maybe the wake-up call that they needed because Salzburg in either leg are going to be a very difficult proposition. They've become mm. such a solid team. I've been really impressed with the way that they've taken to to life under Matthias Jaisler. I, I don't think that he'll be there that much longer because I definitely think that if he's not moved up the the, the Red Bull pipeline, uh, you know, that there will be other clubs in Germany looking at him, trying to prize him away because he, he obviously is a very talented young coach. Uh, you know, who's burst onto the scene very suddenly uh, with this Salzburg side. So I, I think that there is going to be parts of the, this match where it's going to be tough uh, for Bayern, but ultimately I think they're going to have uh, too much quality. I went for a 3-1 Bayern win because I think that when you wound or when when a beast like Bayern has been wounded, they normally hit back and hit back pretty pretty strongly. Uh, you know, and I think I, I felt very sorry for Sven Ulreich over the weekend, uh, you know, obviously coming in for Manuel Neuer and suddenly you see the, the difference that that makes, uh, you know, mm. between those two guys in goal. But, uh, you know, for me, I, th- I think that Bayern 
are going to get that one out of their system uh, and I can see them, you know, perhaps working up a, a, a fairly substantial lead. And obviously for Salzburg, you know, not having the away goals rule, uh, that's yeah. going to make this first leg really uh, of massive importance for them. Yeah, and I'll jump in and say, JJ, that Salzburg had a 100% winning record at home in the group stages. So they have a little something. It has become somewhat of a fortress for them. Maybe they'll be up, up for it and maybe feeling slightly upbeat because of what Bochum just did. I just feel like maybe they could also see it on the other side where ah, oh, we needed to be Bochum. We needed them to kind of be lulled to sleep a little bit and then we can punch <laughs> them in the face. And now that Bochum did that, they're going to be a lot more sharp and focused, Bayern Munich, especially their center backs who I thought were – uh, okay, I'll just say it. they were terrible. Nicolas Sula and, and Upa Makano, not good in the game against Bochum on the weekend. Ulreich didn't get too much help. And when you see a team score four consecutive goals like Bochum did, and just because it was more high energy, they just wanted it a little bit more. We're making those little plays to find the, the or make the difference in the finest margins. I, I just think that Bayern are going to respond, as you say, JJ. And, and I think it's going to be tough. Now, I do think that the matchup that I, I'm very interested about is Kareem Adeyemi who had, uh, in the group stages, he finished with four goals and, and four assists, and he won four penalties. So he is very dynamic up top for RB Salzburg. He is on, looks like he's going to be signing with Borussia Dortmund at this current moment. I'm sure Fabrizio Romano can tell us. Otherwise, I know Bayern had... Yeah, along, along with Sula. With Sula, right. So you have these two guys who are going to be teammates facing each other. Uh, it's kind of killing Mbappe against Real Madrid. But I will say that I like Adeyemi a lot. And I think he could provide a, a threat in, in a lot of different ways. And I'm curious to see how he's going to step up and play. Now, there is this thing that we haven't talked about yet. Salzburg have absolutely nothing to lose. They've got nothing to lose. First time ever in their history that they've been in the knockout rounds. And obviously, yeah. they're taking on one of the favorites. And sometimes, when if you can, as a manager, if you can really tap into that underdog role, everything to play for, which I think they will. I do, to JJ's point, I think they'll make it difficult. However, getting to my bets... Robert Lewandowski, even though Bochum beat him 4-2, Lewandowski had both goals. The guy is an absolute machine. He's one of the certainties in life. He loves this competition. He loves scoring goals. So I like Lewandowski to score, both teams to score, and Bayern to win. That's plus 200. I bet something similar to that like six or seven times, and it's hit about 65 to 70% of the time. I mean, Lewandowski is a machine in this competition, so I like that value a lot, and I think you should take a look at it. I love it. 60% of the time. It, it does. Every time. Um, <laughs> I, I gave it a 2-1 win to Bayern Munich. Uh, to your point, nothing to lose. This is uh, Salzburg's first ever game in the knockout stages in the Champions League. By the way, they did play last season with Bayern Munich winning 6-2 away and 3-1 at home. You know, so it's not looking good for Salzburg. But when you have nothing to lose against a team that, by the way, just lost, even though they're a Goliath, it should be interesting to see. But... That is it. That is the final game we of the we week. I love it. So much action. <laughs> Champions League. Before we say goodbye, some final thoughts. Jonathan Johnson, anything you want to mention that we have? And what is your final thought as we wrap up the Champions League preview? I'm just uh, really looking forward to getting back into the Champions League action with you guys, dissecting all of the games, joining you from Parc des Princes tomorrow after PSG Real. Love it's, it. uh, you know, shaping up to be a an exciting uh, couple of weeks with all these great games. Yeah, I'm just jealous that JJ gets to go to I know, right? see my favorite matchup in the Champions League knockout I know. rounds. What the hell? And I don't so really like, I don't really like you right now, JJ. I know, and he's so like <laughs> and he's so blasé. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just gonna go to talk to friends. <laughs> no yeah, good for you, JJ. I'm yeah, gonna JJ. be I'm gonna yeah, be I, mean, I, I didn't say no biggie, but yeah, no biggie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there, I'm there every game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough. Enough. This is like Mbappe in his office when they're trying to give him a new contract. Yeah, whatever. I'm fine. <laughs> anyway, Champions League preview, Jimmy Conrad. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everybody. Jonathan Johnson, always a pleasure. Likewise. Thanks a lot for having me on. Thank you, everybody, for being part of the family. Que golazo pod on Twitter. Make sure to follow everything. Paramount Plus has all the games, of course. We're on CBS Sports HQ as well. So make sure to follow all of us on those channels. YouTube.com forward slash Que golazo. Enjoy the Champions League as it returns. And we will see you next time. Till then.